Good afternoon. Welcome to Wholesome Roots. And this is our goat fencing collaboration video. What makes a good goat fence? That is the question I'm going to attempt to answer today. Here at Wholesome Roots, we have two different styles of fencing to contain our goats. A good fence is gonna keep your animals safe and it's gonna keep your animals where you want them to be. The first style of fencing I'll talk about is the permanent fence. That's the way we keep our bucks contained. This permanent fence it does not move, it is permanent. It is a physical barrier that keeps the animals exactly where we want them. And as long as we make sure there are no breaks in the fence, the animals will stay exactly where we want them. This might be the simplest kind of fencing that you could have on your farm. If you want to keep your goats somewhere and you don't want them to move anywhere else, a permanent fence might be the solution that you're looking for. The second type of fencing that we use here at Wholesome Roots is temporary. And we love our temporary net fencing. Uh, we use a company called Premier One, and the reason we like temporary fencing for our does especially is because it is mobile. We are able to move this fence anytime we want. We can put this fence in just about any shape we want, anywhere we want, um, around any vegetation that we want in order to rotationally graze our goats. Um, this method that we use here is something I picked up when I worked on a sheep farm where we rotationally grazed sheep and cattle um, all over pastures to control exactly where we wanted them to eat grass. Um, I adopted the same method here and we use it uh, to basically anywhere on the farm that there are things the goats can eat, I can move this fencing there and the goats are able to eat it. Now I'll tell you some of the pros and some of the cons of temporary net fencing. The pros of net fencing. I can put the goats anywhere I want to. Right now I'm looking at some other things that they might want to eat pretty soon and if I feel like it I can move the goats out to a different area. All I have to do is break the fence down and reassemble it. Another pro to the temporary net fencing is the ability to add more sections. Um, as we've grown here at Wholesome Roots, we have added a few extra sections and that increases our ability uh, to have a much bigger paddock. If I need to divide a paddock into smaller paddocks, I'm able to do that as well. Um, so that's another pro. You can customize. You can make any shape you want. You can add more pieces. You can take away pieces. You can make divisions. All these things are possible with the electric net fencing. Moving the fence is very simple. Um, you can just pull up on each stake and they come right out of the ground. And when you want to move the fence, they just kind of, the pieces all fold up in each, each segment. Uh, I can't really demonstrate that right now. Um, but yeah, moving them is very simple. And then placing a post is also simple. This is a double spiked post. You see the double spikes. I prefer double spikes in most situations. 
unless the ground is just really hard there is also a single spike version um, that you can use the hammer uh, it's a orange plastic little hammer thing that you can hammer it into the ground and I've replaced a few of the spikes with single spike um, posts this one being an example of that the brown cap is how I can tell it's a single spike um, the only difference there's one spike instead of two but you can hammer it into the ground and now I can tell you about the cons cons are the things that aren't so great about the temporary electric net fencing in no particular order just as I see the cons I will show you uh, the fencing is not going to last forever. Each seg section that you purchase comes with little pieces you can use to repair the fencing. Um, the vertical pieces here are not um, electric, but they are able to be repaired if you need to. Another con, about the double spikes anyway, is over time they tend to warp and bend. Especially when the ground is hard, uh, they will split apart and you have to bend them by hand. It's really hard. They don't sell just the spike itself to replace. You have to replace the whole post. Which is why I tried out single spike on uh, certain sections that this happened to. and. I still can't say one way or the other which one is better overall, but I will just say I, I like the ease of the single spike when it comes to setting the fence up. All I have to do is step on it most of the time. Um, you kind of need the hammer for the single spike. The electric net fencing works great as long as you have the proper amount of electricity going through it. Otherwise, this is really not much of a barrier at all as far as a physical barrier uh, there is not much to this some goats can stick their head through here um, if it's not energized properly and they can push through they can get out they can get tangled in this they can escape 99% of the time it is human error on our part if the goats get out. That means Rose or I forgot to turn on the fence. Because the barrier on this sort of fence is more of a psychological barrier than it is a physical barrier. This fence sends electricity through the horizontal wires. And if that electricity is flowing properly, it's going to hurt when an animal touches it. Um, if they don't associate this fence with the pain that they receive when they touch it, they're not going to respect that barrier. So it's very important that you have a proper energizer that sends the right amount of electricity through the fence. If it doesn't hurt you, it's not going to hurt the goat. That's why I always test it by touching it myself. You might think I'm crazy. They do make uh, testers. We have a tester where you can check the amount of electricity going through it. Um, I couldn't find it offhand uh, today for this video, but I do have one. But I'm not scared to touch it. Um, I know it's not going to hurt me that bad. It's only a quick zap. And so usually I'll test it myself. If it doesn't hurt me, it's not going to hurt those goats. And if it's not going to zap them, it's not going to keep them in. And right now I have the fence off just so I can make the video and show you guys that um, you know I can touch it. But that's probably the most important thing you need to know about this type of fencing is that you really need the right type of energizer. <laughs> Here at Wholesome Roots, we use a solar energizer. 
And you can see how weather worn this one is. This is the second Energizer that we had. Um, we bought it off the Premier One website. It's so old and worn out that there's not even a sticker left on it for me to tell you which model it is. Nope, that's just a warning sticker. Uh, this worked great when we only had a couple of sections of fence and eight goats, 12 goats, 15 goats. It worked fine, but we had to upgrade. We had to keep adding sections of fence as we added more goats, which made this model right here not quite strong enough. And we were having um, escapes on a multiple occasions because the fence just wasn't strong enough so we had to upgrade this model right here is significantly stronger this model was not from the premier one website it is a steel by red snapper and this thing is very powerful uh, it powers this whole paddock this unit is so strong it is able to properly energize multiple sections of the net fencing and also i'm able to run a coated wire and energize the smaller paddock that's holding the dogs right now it's that strong if i touch this this hurts these animals respect this fence because it is properly energized so as long as you have this fence juiced up properly the animals should respect it and they'll stay where exactly where you want them and now the ideal situation that I would love to have here on our farm that we don't currently is a proper temporary setup which we already have combined with a more permanent setup which we do not and what I mean by that is having a proper main fence border of high tensile electric wire five or seven strands of hot wire that are hot constantly through AC power um, and that would be like the main border around the farm and then you can uh, play off of it with the temporary fencing and that's how I did it over on the sheep farm we had a very strong permanent electric border fence and we made our paddocks off of it even if there was a breach where the sheep escaped they were still contained somewhat by the more permanent border here we don't have that so much we have an old fence line with remnants of barbed wire which is not so good for goats i do not recommend barbed wire for goats i don't recommend barbed wire for sheep i don't recommend barbed wire for anything other than human predators and even even then it's not so effective so yeah, no, no to barbed wire, yes to a strong physical permanent border, and yes to temporary electric net fencing, so long as it's properly energized. And that's how we do our fencing here at Wholesome Roots, and we're glad to be a part of this collaboration. And so now I'll encourage you to go check out some of these other channels that are also participating. There's Sweet Iris Farm, Farmer G, Papa Pepper, Home in the Sticks, and VW Family Farm. Go check out their channels um, and you see how they can do their goat fencing. This is how we do it here. This works for us. Um, so I wanna thank you again for watching. <laughs> I got lots of goats here trying to tell me hi. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time. You know the drill. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots. I can't remember. Was the switch on or off? And I guess that's a con to this unit, but is that on or off? There's no on or off label. 
Uh, I really should have my tester, but I don't. Hmm. Ooh, that's spicy.